The ocean is the foundation for the global health of our planet, yet we know surprisingly little about it. From 2009 to 2013, the research sailing ship Tara, owned by the Tara Ocean Foundation, sailed the oceans of the world to collect samples of microscopic plankton. Plankton are organisms that drift with the currents, composed of zooplankton, protists, bacteria, archaea and viruses. They form the basis of marine food webs, capture a large fraction of atmospheric carbon dioxide and release oxygen via photosynthesis. The Tara Oceans expedition brought back around 35,000 samples. Based on high throughput DNA sequencing and advanced microscopy, a team of scientists are characterizing plankton communities and understanding their functions. Much has already been done, including description of the ocean microbiome containing around 40 million genes, an atlas of 116 million genes from eukaryotes, and characterization of close to 200,000 different types of viruses. But what can these catalogues tell us about global patterns of diversity of different kinds of plankton? And what is their capacity to adapt to changes in their environment? The two papers seek to address these issues using new data from the Arctic Ocean. One paper presents distribution maps of the diversity of all major groups of plankton. The results show that diversity is highest around the equator and decreases towards the poles. The existence of such latitudinal diversity gradients is well established on land and was first described by Alexander von Humboldt. It's fitting that on his 250th anniversary we now find the same patterns in the ocean. Temperature appears to be the main factor explaining the gradient, with the availability of resources coming second. The other paper complements this conclusion by looking at gene expression. The study measured the activity of microbial communities by analysing gene transcripts in combination with a newly established catalogue of 47 million microbial genes. These analyses allowed us to study not only what ocean microbes are capable of doing, but also what they actually do. Microbial communities in warmer waters are more diverse and benefit from a large pool of genes. They can be switched on or off to help the microbes adapt. In polar waters, however, the variety of species and genes is much smaller. Such a community is more hardwired to its environment and might not be able to adapt its activity by gene expression changes in response to ocean warming. The warmer and colder waters thus appear as two ecosystems with distinct adaptive mechanisms for their microbial populations. The paramount influence of temperature raises obvious questions related to climate change. How will these communities be affected and what could be the consequences? Using the IPCC climate models, the results indicate that higher oceanic temperatures would lead to a tropicalization of temperate and polar regions, with an increased diversity of planktonic species. These regions are key for several environmental and economic reasons. They capture carbon from the atmosphere, they're very active fishing areas, and a large number of protected areas provide shelter for endangered species. By studying the diversity and adaptation mechanisms of planktonic species at global scale, the studies point towards different impacts of climate change in different regions of our oceans.